to the animals. Imagine talking to a tiger. Chatting to a cheetah. What can he do? We can talk to the animals. All that's needed is to speak their language. I know. I'm Susan Vaughn, and I've been communicating with animals for 20 years, helping people sort out all kinds of mysteries. It's a matter of translation, sending and receiving telepathic messages from our animal friends, negotiating behavioral changes, and clearing out trauma. We're on the cutting edge of something old that's new again with this kind of messaging. Jeff and Joan Buckingham called me because they had adopted a rooster by the name of Ken, whose enthusiastic crowing was disrupting their daily life. He would get on the porch and start crowing really loud um, next to the windows, and it was if you were on the phone, you couldn't hear. And people go, "Is that a rooster?" Yeah. And so um, it was so loud, it was like he was inside your head. Yeah. It was really, really loud. And so, you know, we called Susan and say, "Hey, can you talk to Ken and tell him to stay off the porch?" And she did, and he never got back up on the porch after yeah. one conversation. And、uh, he spent he, up until that yeah, time, you couldn't get him off the porch for more than a few minutes. He, his whole life was on the porch. After one conversation、yeah. with Susan, I never saw him on the porch again. Yeah, it was amazing. People call me because their animal friend's behavior concerns them. Maybe their horse is skittish and cross ties, or their dog bolts out of the door into the street, or the cat hides under the bed, afraid of everything. Maybe their animal companion seems depressed. The cow has lost her calf, or they want to move the bull to another pasture, or perhaps their beloved cockatiel is plucking his feathers out. Or their bearded dragon has stopped eating. David and Emma were a talented search team, locating Native American grave sites and helping detectives with cold cases were her specialty. But when David tried to teach Emma a new tight grid search technique, he was unsuccessful. As hard as I tried, I could not convey to her what I needed her to do because she had been trained originally to just do a free search.、Um, And so I asked Susan to come out and meet with us. We sat on the back of my pickup truck with Emma between us, and we had a tailgate meeting. And, and、uh, Susan wanted to know, well, how could she help us? And I said, well, I, I, I'm not able to convey to Emma what I, how I need her to do this new search pattern, and it's imperative that we are able to do this. And Emma just looked intently into Susan's eyes as they were communicating, and like she totally got it. And it didn't take more than Couple of minutes.、Uh, once I explained to Susan what I needed, and I kind of painted the picture for her, and、uh, she painted the picture for Emma, I guess, and we got off the tailgate. And I thought, well, she's going to do exactly how she's always done it. And I deployed her and gave her the command to search, and she immediately started searching exactly how we needed her to search and doing a grid pattern. And I was just amazed. Henry was a ten-year-old macho tabby cat who had always been on his own as a feral cat. He hissed and spit when anyone came near him, except for Bonnie, the woman who had trapped him and brought him to the shelter. He allowed her to hold him, administer pills, pet him, and care for him. Then one rainy day, she made the decision to take him home. She tried letting him out into the rest of her multi-cat population. The one thing when I let him out downstairs. He attacked my 20-year-old Clementine, and this happened like three times. And I said, "That can't be." And I had fallen in love with Henry. He was just、um, a sweetheart, and he obviously loved me. So I called Susan. Susan came to the house, and we did a, a communication. And Henry sat on my lap downstairs, and、uh, Susan explained that you know I really wanted this to be his forever home, that this was real important to me. But that he could not attack the other cats, and he especially couldn't attack Clementine. Clementine, if anybody hurt her, she was she had been with me forever, and this just would not work. And so for a while, when I had him up, I would have him on a, a, a leash connected to his collar. But he never attacked any of my cats. Never went after Clementine. In fact, 
he would sleep on the bed, she would be on this arm, he would sleep with his head in my hand, right next to it. He never went after anybody after that. While 85 million American households live with animal companions, the 15 million that don't are still fascinated by how telepathic communication works. We are finally now ready to rediscover this ancient communication technique that brings more harmony to the homes we share with our animal friends.